Section three, delta normal methods. Suppose we have n risk factors, and all assets in a portfolio can be represented by their delta exposures to these risk factors. If these risk factors are joint normally distributed, then the VAR computation is greatly simplified. Define xit as the exposures aggregated across all assets for risk factor i and measured in currency units. Divide xit by the portfolio value vt to obtain the portfolio weight wit. Note that the return of a portfolio whose assets returns are jointly normally distributed is itself normally distributed. Then the portfolio rate of return over the time horizon h is the weighted sum of the rates of returns of all the individual risk factors. Let boldface wt be the portfolio weight vector at time t, and boldface r with subscript t plus h be the rate of return vector of the n risk factors at time t plus h. We can write the portfolio rate of return at time t plus h in the following compact form. By the linearity of expectation, the expected portfolio rate of return is the weighted sum of the expected rates of returns of the n risk factors. Let sigma ij be the covariance of the rates of returns of the risk factors i and j, then the variance of the portfolio rate of return is given by the following sum. Let capital sigma t plus h denote the covariance matrix of the risk factors rate of returns over the time horizon h, the variance of the portfolio can be expressed in the equivalent matrix multiplication form. Let vt be the portfolio value at time t, then the exposure to risk factor i denoted by xit is equal to the weight wit times vt. Let the boldface xt denote the vector of the dollar exposures to the n risk factors. Then the variance of the portfolio dollar return is given by the following formula. Thus, we obtain the portfolio VAR as follows. In a delta normal world, the portfolio VAR depends on the number of risk factors, variances of, and the covariances between component risk factors. Hence, this method is also called the variance and the covariance method. Historical data is used to estimate the required statistical parameters, including means, standard deviations, and correlations. Here are some VAR related terms. Individual VAR is the VAR of one asset taken in isolation. Undiversified VAR is the sum of individual VARs. Diversified VAR is the portfolio VAR which takes into account the diversification effects between components. The difference between diversified and undiversified VARs is often used to illustrate the benefit of diversification. Now let's take a look at the following example. Consider a portfolio of two assets with parameters for a certain time period h given as follows. Can you determine the portfolio VAR at a 95% confidence level if the portfolio value is $4 million? Compare your answer with the undiversified VAR. First, given the volatilities of the two assets' returns and their correlation coefficient, we can construct the covariance matrix as follows. Since the portfolio value is $4 million, with one quarter being invested in asset 1 and the rest three quarters in asset 2, we get the vector of the dollar exposures, x. Then, the variance of the portfolio dollar return can be obtained by the formula x transpose times the covariance matrix sigma times x. Taking the square root, we get the dollar volatility of the portfolio return. Note that 
95% confidence level corresponds to alpha equal to 1.645. Thus, the required portfolio VAR is given by alpha times the dollar volatility of the portfolio return. That is, $414,203. With the given volatilities and the dollar exposures of the two assets, the individual VARs can be calculated respectively as follows. Adding up the two, we get the undiversified VAR being $462,738, which is greater than the portfolio VAR by $48,535. As a summary, in this lesson, we have learned the delta normal method to estimate VAR of a portfolio with exposures to multiple risk factors. Next lesson, we will study the simulation methods.